These right here are the notes I made whilst creating the world's first realistic Nerf gun drawing. So I condensed them down into an orderly script and today we're going to go through those notes so you can hopefully pick up on a couple of things to use in your artwork as well. So before we dive into the drawing process, let's go through the materials I'm using. They are Nick Pro Mechanical Pencils, Windsor & Newton Pro Markers, Faber Castells Polychromos and all of these are on top of Strathmore Tone Grey Paper and if you want to check any of them out, I'll leave them down in the description. So my first task before I can even think about using any colours is to get a sketch. And if you've watched a lot of my other videos, you'll know that I love to use the grid method as it's the only way to guarantee that all the proportions are correct. Which is especially important on this drawing as I wanted it to be a one-to-one -one replica of the real thing. And the reason that I do the grid method is simply to break the image up into more digestible chunks and also provide more reference points to go off so I know where more things are in comparison to where other things are. That's pretty much the basis of it. You may also see that I broke up the boxes further in the more detailed areas like the the end strike logo and also the nerf logo on the hammer or the loady bit on the back just to provide even more reference points in those places to ensure that everything is in the right place before I start with the marker work. Now let's stop right there. Whilst recording this video I forgot to mention something really important and it's that before going in with the alcohol markers I erase all the grid lines and also go over the entire sketch with a kneadable eraser to remove any of the excess graphite because something you may not know is that when you go over the graphite with alcohol markers you can no longer erase it. So if you've got all these dark lines everywhere they will show through in the final result and you do not want this. And with that said, let's get straight back to the drawing. Now the marker work I did on this drawing is probably the best that I've ever done. And I think it comes down to two reasons. Number one, I simply spent way longer than usual picking up all those little details. And number two, I blended the colors a lot more than usual. And I think this is down to the yellows and the oranges just blending together so nicely that I got a bit carried away. But if you're wondering how to blend alcohol markers, here's a crash course. Imagine you have a darker and a lighter color next to each other. You just need to go over the intersection between them with something called an inter intermediary. Now this is a colour that is lighter than the darker colour but darker than the lighter colour. To put it simply, it's the colour in between. But it's really important that once you've gone over that intersection with the intermediary that you go back in with those original two colours just to remove that sudden change in tone and boom you have blended the colours together. I think it's also worth pointing out that when you first put alcohol markers down they look a lot darker than when they'll be dry so always bear this in mind. So moving on to the pencil work I want to start by talking you through how I did the end strike logo. I firstly went in with a really sharp relatively dark pencil just to refine the structure of the shield making sure it's nice and symmetrical. I could then start jotting in the writing and this is going to sound very weird but when I did this I didn't necessarily view it as writing words but instead as loads of different lines that are all at relative distances from each other and I find that this mind frame leads to just everything falling into place a lot better than if I were to approach it as just writing words out and yeah saying this out loud it doesn't really make a lot of sense but hopefully a couple of you may get something from it. So after I've jotted where the words need to go I can then go in very carefully with a very dark pencil and refine the words a bit to make them readable. Which unfortunately is a very time consuming process as I had to constantly sharpen the pencil to ensure that I had the most control over where the pigment is actually going. Now as I move on to the rest of the gun everything obviously needs to be very smooth and the best way to do this with the coloured pencils is through a process called layering. This is where I first go into an area and just jot in where all the basic shadows, midtones, and highlights need to go. This is my first layer. It's made it look 3D but it's all very grainy. So I then go in with a lighter colour over pretty much the entire area but barring the most extreme shadows and highlights just to kind of smush it all together. This is my second layer and you may notice that everything has become a lot flatter now but a lot of that pencil grain has disappeared. I can then go back in with some of those initial darker colours I used in the first layer and just bring that contrast and colour saturation back up again which is vital to make your drawing pop. And this is my third layer. Now you can keep repeating this process adding more layers and more details as you do so but be aware that after a while the page can become oversaturated with pigment and the pencils you put on top will appear very blocked. So you'll need to experiment with your pencils and paper to find the threshold of the materials that you have. Now moving on to the barrel of the gun. Some key things I was looking out for were that the highlights and shadows were all parallel to each other and that it was symmetrical alongside an imaginary line on that middle bullet holder. You can also see that I'm using that process of layering that we just discussed and adding blues in both the highlights and shadows to bring that colour saturation up so it doesn't look really dull in comparison to that very bright yellow body. And to create the illusion that it is shiny, which it is in real life, I added in some yellows to the highlights to show a reflection from the main body of the gun but making sure to use it sparingly as I didn't want it to mix too much with the blue and create green. Now coming down to the writing on the lower beam I approached it in a similar way as I did to the writing on the end strike logo. This time I wanted to create the illusion that they're popping out of the panel so I used a reasonably dark colour on the right hand sides of the letters 
and a lighter colour on the left hand side and blended them to the mid or main colour of the actual beam. This helps create the illusion that yes, they are part of the beam, but they're also protruding out. Going back to the barrel, you can see towards the back of it we have this pattern going on and as it follows the curvature of the cylinder, it's really important that the segments at the top are both smaller, closer together and less detailed than the ones in the middle. And if you're ever confronted with something like this, I would highly recommend taking a nice long look at your reference image because at the end of the day, the reference image does not lie. And once you think you've got your head around everything in that image, you can then start to jot in the basic segments with a reasonably dark pencil, but press quite lightly. And then once you're happy, it follows the general form of the structure, then you can go in a bit darker, adding in your shading and then bring it to life. And with that said, let's get back to the panels. To ensure that all the colors were nice and bright, I refrained from using grays on any of the yellow sections. Instead, opting for oranges and browns to do the shadows, as using greys, also the black and white pencil, really reduces that colour saturation, which is a very bad thing, as it makes your drawings look dull, which nobody wants. And again, when it came to doing the hammer or the loading mechanism at the back here, as well as the handle in a minute, you can see that just like the barrel, I weaved in those blues and yellows into the highlights just to give it that extra kick so it doesn't end up looking rubbish in comparison to the rest of the piece. And whilst we're on the back here, we have the Nerf logo, which was relatively simple to do, as the grids had made sure that the letters were all in the right place. It was just up to me to make sure that the top and bottom of the writing were parallel and that the thicknesses and angles of the letters were somewhat consistent, which is easier said than done, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now at this stage, I'd spent over 20 hours working on this drawing and it was nearing completion and the temptation to rush was starting to dawn on me. But rushing would be dumb as you'd ruin all of your hard work. So here is a very simple way to avoid drawing burnout. Imagine the drawing is made up of many mini drawings like the front, the barrel, the lower beam, the loading mechanism, the handle, etc. If you feel you're getting, dare I say it, bored of an area, just move to another one and work on that for a bit. And oftentimes you'll pick up on something that you probably missed the first time round. Then when you get bored of that mini drawing, move to another one and keep cycling through all these different mini drawings that you split your bigger drawing into. And then when you're bored of just all of them, then it's time to maybe have a break, go outside, have some water and come back to it a bit later. But when you do come back to it, it's really important that you do look at it as a whole drawing because yes, you have split it into all these mini drawings, but you do kind of want it to be one thing finished piece. And something that I like to do when I come back to a drawing is work on an area that's already relatively complete, just to act as a warm up before I start tackling something that is nowhere near completion. But in these final stages, it does really help to try and channel that enthusiasm you had when you first started the drawing. Now that sounded very woo woo, but it does kind of help. So here you go, the world's first realistic Nerf gun drawing completed in just under 32 hours. I do have prints available down in the description alongside all the materials that I used today. And if you've made it this far, you're like a top 5% viewer. So thank you for sticking around. Please give this video a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button. And I'll hopefully see you soon with more videos just like it.